Good morning and thank you for joining us on this, our second virtual open morning of 2020. My name is Michael Bond and I had the privilege of being headmaster of Brentwood School since September 2019. It's great to have you with us and I hope that before too long you'll be able to come and see us in person. We're offering tours every afternoon, Monday to Friday in term time, and you can book these on our website. I'll say more about that later. I'm currently in the oldest part of the school, which dates back to 1557. I think it's safe to say that the five pupils who sat here back then for lessons in Latin with George Otway, our first schoolmaster, could never have possibly imagined the events of 2020. To be honest, I'm not sure any of us could have done that just a few short months ago. When the pandemic arrived in the UK, we had to act quickly to protect the safety and well-being of everyone who learns and works here. And so, in the space of only a few days in March, we shifted uh, almost the entire operation of the school online. I'm very proud of the way in which we did so, and there were very few schools in the country that maintained our level of provision both within and beyond the classroom. We continued a full timetable via Zoom and Google Classroom. We put on 14 Friday night musical concerts viewed by friends and pupils and former pupils and parents around the world and made up of over 3,000 individual submissions. We even had a virtual sports day competition with over 5,700 individual entries in just one day. I could go on. I mention this because it's an example of the talent, imagination and dedication that you'll see every day from the people who make this school such a great place to be. Our teachers and our pupils have great affection for our school, which is one of the many things that struck me about Brentwood when I first visited a couple of years ago. We have fantastic facilities and an ambitious vision that takes the best of our history and traditions and fuses it with the latest in educational thinking. And this, together with the people who work and learn here, is what makes Brentwood such a special school. We achieve outstanding examination results and have an unrivaled co-curricular program that sees our pupils writing and performing their own plays, representing the school on the national sporting stage, scuba diving in Ecuador, playing netball in Dubai, and so the list goes on. Our pupils are confident without being arrogant. They look out for each other. They do the right thing even when no one is looking. And they respect difference. You will see a footballer enjoying lunch with a chorister and a dancer running a recycling project with a chess player. We will celebrate the success of a student who achieves B, B, C and A level if that is the outcome of consistently hard work and a reflection of their potential as much as we celebrate the success of a student who works similarly hard and achieves a full house of A stars. Likewise, the student who suffered terrible stage fright but who perseveres and eventually plays a part in the chorus of a school play will be celebrated as much as the leading actors. We help our pupils solve problems. In partnership with parents, we teach them to persevere after setbacks learning from their mistakes. We teach them to have a can-do attitude and we teach them to challenge the norm. We encourage them to ask questions in class and take control over their own learning. They work hard and they enjoy great success within and beyond the classroom. And once they've left us, many go on to use and develop their leadership skills and achieve beyond their expectations, always remembering what Brentwood has taught them. That's who we are. We are friendly. But don't take my word for it, folks. Uh, I'm joined by four of our students who are going to answer some questions. And because we believe in authenticity and challenging the norm here at Brentwood, uh, the students do not know the questions they're about to be asked. First, I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves and say a couple of words. So, starting with you, Joseph. Hi, um, I'm Joseph. Um, I'm in the fourth year here at Brentwood, and I have been here for four years. Okay, thank you, Joseph. Moving on to Anna. Hi, I'm Anna. I've been here for two years. I'm in the second year. 
and Ishan. Uh, my name is Ishan. I'm in upper six and I do A level. And Beth. I'm Beth Linnell and I'm head of school at Reverend I'm in upper six and I've been at the school since I was seven. Thank you very much. Now that's uh, given you a little bit of time to prepare for things that you don't know are covering your way. So here we go. Let's see how our students get on. I'm going to start with Ishan. Here's your first question, Ishan. If you were on a desert island and you could have one aspect of Brentwood School there with you, what would it be and why? It would have to be the music department because, to be honest, it's where I spend most of my time. And um, I mean, you can't live without music, can you? Especially at primary school. Okay, uh, and I would have to say, uh, Ishan didn't know that question was coming, but I did expect him to say that. Uh, Ishan, uh, during our lockdown, uh, we created uh, a country called Virtual Music Land that I mentioned a few uh, moments ago. And Ishan actually did a lot of our video editing, putting together many, many of those 3,000 musical submissions uh, into our 14 Friday night concerts. So I'm not surprised that that was his answer. I'm now going to move over to Joseph. You're up next. Uh, what Friday afternoon activity do you take part in and what do you enjoy about it? Um, so on a Friday I do CCF, Combined Cadet Force. It's pretty much like the army. We do drills and stuff. We do like attacks on other groups and it's quite a lot of fun. It's like ambush them. Um, and you also get to learn like discipline and you know just being part of a big company. Yeah, thank you, Joseph. And our CCF here at Brentwood School is, we believe, the biggest in the country, uh, and we have uh, hundreds of our students who take part in that on a Friday afternoon, and then in normal times, lots of weekends uh, and residential trips uh, besides. So you're uh, you're enjoying your CCF, Joseph. Thank you uh, for that. Moving on to Beth now. Um, now here's a challenging one for you, Beth. If you had the time it takes to go from the ground floor to the 10th floor in an elevator to convince someone to choose Brentwood School, what would you say? I would say that if you want to feel like a member of the community, as soon as you walk into a school, then you should come to Brentwood because it is the most wonderful place to be. Thank you very much. A very uh, uh, good, concise answer. And I reckon you probably got up to floor five there and you sold it to me. So, uh, so well done. Uh, and last but not least, with our first questions, uh, over to you, Anna. Um, I'd like you to, uh, to tell me about something that you've enjoyed in school from the last seven days. From the last seven days, um, so obviously during like, the circumstances, the lockdown and having to isolate between the years, sort of. Um, I actually, so all our orchestras had to be, like, sort of, so they were put into year group orchestras, and I found that it, it really showed, and it really, like, brought out, um, like, your year group, and it really helped you, like, bond. So Anna um, is, is one of our uh, one of the many stars that we have in our in our music department, and again, I'm not surprised that Anna chose music. Uh, and on that subject, uh, if you haven't already seen it, uh, then do please look out for our school YouTube channel, uh, where last Friday evening uh, we were very proud and delighted uh, to showcase our virtual house music competition uh, 2020. Uh, in which Anna was one of the many stars. So do look out for that on our YouTube channel. You've completed your first questions, folks, uh, but there are more. There are more. Uh, we're pushing the envelope here. Uh, Ishan, back to you. What do you most remember about your first year at Brentwood School? And what's your top tip for someone's first few weeks here? So I remember Friday after school clubs that we used to do. Um, there were sort of six or seven different options and there were different groups that people were fit into. And it was sort of just a time to bond with friends that you haven't made yet or just spend time with people and get to know the teachers and have a bit of downtime at the end of the week. A piece of advice would be don't be scared because it is a big school. It can be quite overwhelming. But um, as long as you know that you can ask for help and it's not embarrassing or anything, then 
just enjoy school life. It's great, it's a lot of fun. Great advice. And I would add to that, um, it's inevitable and it's true for almost pretty much every school. Uh, anyone coming into our first year is going to be coming from a, school, a smaller school. Uh, primary schools are smaller than secondary schools. And one of the questions we get asked most frequently by parents of uh, our incoming first years is what is it like to come to a, a bigger school from their primary school? And Ishan's advice there uh, to be really positive, to be really can do, and to just get involved and give things a go, I think is very sound advice. So thank you for that, Ishan. I'm going to come to you, Joseph, now. Uh, different question. What's the best school trip you've ever been on at Brentwood School? Probably the best trip I've been on was in second year. I went on an athletics tour to Lanzarote. Okay. Yeah. And uh, tell me a bit about the athletics trip. What, what's your, what are your main events, Joe? Um, I do hurdles and discus, and we had quite a lot of time to just, you know, like train, perfect our technique, and you know, have a lot of fun with the rest of our like athletics group per se yeah. and it was just quite a lot of time to like bond with people and have a great time. Fantastic and uh, there's no doubt about it um, we're all missing uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, run our usual school trip program at the moment uh, but we're very excited about getting that back as soon as we possibly can and there are lots and lots of trips uh, that happen here uh, over uh, the normal school year. Thank you Joseph. Moving to you Anna. What's your favourite school meal? My favourite school meal is the chicken pie. Chicken pie, and, and uh, okay, and why is that your favourite? Um, it has like little bits of sweet corn in it, it's just really nice. Very good, thank you very much. Uh, that was a bit of a curveball for you there, Anna, so you weren't expecting that one. Uh, uh, Ishan, back to you. What are your plans for next year when you finish? Next year, I hope to um, study business management um, and all marketing. Um, and I'm looking at Exeter currently as my first choice. Um, so I'm working towards that. So you're in the thick of the UCAS application season. Very yeah, well. It's a very busy time for our other six forms. Um, and Beth, what will you miss most about the school when you leave Brentwood? Oh, that's so difficult. I think I'll miss all the people and when you're here, it's just like being a part of the family and when people will go to uni and you might not see a lot of the people in our year again. Yeah. So I think I'll miss the teachers as well because of the support that they give you and the relationships you build up, especially in sixth form. I think I'll, and the school lunches. <laughs> school lunches, I miss those. <laughs> Very good. Um, and I think I've said it earlier, um, you know, we, we have fantastic facilities, but I always say this, um, it's people who make good schools truly great schools. And uh, one of the things that I've been most impressed about uh, since joining Redwood uh, is the people, the students and staff, uh, who make this school such a special place. I do have a final question for each of you, and it's quite a tricky one. It's the same question for each of you. Um, let's give it a go. If you had to sum up Brentwood School with just one word, what would it be? Yes. I think it would be diverse. Diverse? And um, community. Community. Ishan. I was going to say community, but I'll say fun. And best. I don't know. Thank you very much. You've done that very well. That was a tough <laughs> question. Uh, on the spot, one word. Uh, thank you very much to our student panel. Um, uh, who I hope you've enjoyed listening to their answers. They were genuinely uh, unscripted, so the students did not know what questions uh, were coming. We have done that in one take. Uh, I promise you, there are no cuts in the filming of this. Uh, and I think that's a, a testament uh, to our community here at Brentwood. We're now going to take you on a tour of our school with our head of Key Stage 2 and 3 transition, Karen Cray, herself a former pupil here at Brentwood. A warm welcome to Brentwood School. I'm Karen Cray, the head of Key Stage 2 and 3 transition, and I manage the induction of new pupils into the school. This morning, I'd like to invite you to take a tour with me. Whilst we appreciate there's no substitute for coming on a tour in person, 
We wanted to film this on a normal school day, so you'll hear some of the sounds and some of the sights that you'd appreciate with a very busy school. Let's get started. This is Old Big School, and back in 1558, this was the first and the only schoolroom at the school. George Otway was the first schoolmaster and indeed first headmaster, but he only had a cohort of five pupils. They were here from seven in the morning until seven at night, and they only studied Greek and Latin. I'm pleased to say that our curriculum has expanded considerably since then, and first year pupils now study a range of subjects, from creatives to performing arts, sports to science, computing to well-being, but I'm pleased to say that Latin is still on the curriculum. We also use this space now for, um, for assemblies, for debates, um, for teacher communications. To my right, there are some boards up on the wall. They are a list of our schoolmasters, our headmasters, and the presidents of the Old Brentwood Society. Every pupil automatically becomes an Old Brentwood when they leave the school. And our alumni network now features over 7,000 people in over 70 countries. The Old Brentwood Society is incredibly helpful to us. It provides networking opportunities for pupils, work experience, and it's great that Old Brentwoods really want to take a, an active role in supporting the next generation of Brentwood School students. And from the oldest room in the school, next, we're going to go to the newest. So this is the Bean Academic Centre, and it really is the heart of learning in the school. This area downstairs is a social space. It's open from half past six in the morning until half past seven at night, and students can come and help themselves to a snack from our tuck shop. Every student is issued with an IBD badge similar to this, which parents can load up with cash remotely, which means that the students are actually using a cashless system and not having to worry about losing money while they're at school. As I said, they can use this space socially, they can work collaboratively in here, and it also provides a safe, supervised space for them to come before or after school, or to supplement their lunch in the dining hall with a snack at break or lunchtime. We can also use this space for parents' evenings. We quite often have uh, parent uh, lectures throughout the course of the year about different topics pertaining to either uh, bringing up teenagers or some of the um, academic uh, activities that the students are doing during the school year. Upstairs, in contrast to the social space downstairs, is our silent area, the library. This is open again um, from very early in the morning, from half past seven in the morning until half past six at night. Students can come up here, curl up on one of our comfy sofas and read a book, or they can use one of the many PCs in conjunction with their iPads. As much as students all get issued with an iPad um, to use for academic purposes, sometimes it's better to have it up on a, on a big screen. And students will come up and use this space either before or after school or at break and at lunchtime. There are over 1,000 uh, fictional books this side of the room, so if you've ever got a bored moment, you can curl up on a comfy seat and lose yourself in a few pages. The modern wing of the library extends into this, the old library, which is over 100 years old, and is named after Edwin Bean, one of our early schoolmasters. In here, there are again over 1,000, this time, non-fiction reference books that students can dip into, using the traditional methods of looking words up, whilst at the same time probably being plugged into their iPads, as again, this part of the library is all completely connected to the Wi-Fi. And this is the Bean Lecture Theatre. And in this space, we can host up to 80 students. So again, we will use this for assemblies, for visiting speakers, for debates, and also for house assemblies. Every student, as well as being part of a form, is part of a house. And the house system creates the vertical framework in our pastoral system. It allows students from the upper sixth right the way down to the first year to work collaboratively as a community to help raise funds. The focus of our house system is charity fundraising, and each house will nominate a local and national charity to support during the year. This can be in the form of traditional competitions such as house music, uh, sports competitions, to more innovative challenges. We have included things such as a colour run, a house lip sync challenge, and even frisbee golf. This is the lower floor of the Bean Academic Centre and it doubles up as a social space where students can come and relax on the sofas outside of lessons and also a collaborative working area. It also houses our beehive where our technological entrepreneurs within each of the year groups can come and help students and teachers uh, with any problems that they might have about software or hardware for their iPads. 
The downstairs area, students can chat companionably, whereas upstairs in our Bean Library, there is a silent working space. And the upstairs area also is used for our homework club, Monday to Thursday. Students can come here after school to be supervised and to work on their homework with all the resources at their fingertips. Students simply sign in with the librarian at four and the space is open until 6.30 and they can sign out whenever they're ready to be picked up. So coming from the library, this takes us into the Cunliffe building, which is where first years are based and subjects such as Greek, Latin and classical civilization are taught. There is also our learning support department. Now learning support can cover a number of different things. Students may find at some point in their school career that they need help with processing or organisation, perhaps it's memory and study techniques, right the way through to diagnose learning needs. We are also lucky at school to have our own sanatorium, essentially a health centre, staffed by state registered nurses. They're on hand to deal with any emergencies that might pop up in the school day, to dispense prescribed medication that students might be bringing into school. They're also here to provide out of hours support for our boarders and to help students deal with ongoing medical needs. And this is the Courage Hall, named after one of our chair of governors, Richard Courage. As you can see, it's a large sports space, but it also doubles up for many of our school functions. We host our speech day every summer in this hall. We use it also for public exams, for our house music competition in the first few weeks of term. And the headmaster regularly, on a weekly basis, meets with all of the senior school pupils, all 1,200 of them, as we come together as a community to celebrate the achievements of our students. This is the Vincent Room, one of two dance studios that we have in the sports department. Dance is on the curriculum um, and students can study a variety of different styles from ballet to musical theatre, from street dance to capoeira. At the end of this room, um, just going across the length of the sports hall, is also our fencing sand. And the last few Commonwealth champions, we're delighted to say, have been pupils who've been to Brentwood School. We also have two gyms at the school. This one, which contains the free weights and weighted machines, and downstairs we have a cardio uh, room, which contains running machines, cross trainers uh, and the like. The students can use the facilities after school uh, for an hour using age appropriate machines and it's also a really useful space for us during the winter months when the coaches can bring their teams in to do strength and conditioning work. We're now in the sports department of the school and again the students use the facilities during the school day and it's open to the wider community of Redwood after school hours. We're incredibly lucky here to have 72 acres, which means we have a rich and diverse sporting environment. Students can participate in sport at whatever level suits them, from social sport right the way through to elite training. In sports as diverse as football, rugby, netball and hockey, swimming, athletics, cricket, tennis, and even more individualistic sports, such as fencing, squash, skiing, and even equestrian events. This is our swimming pool. As you can see, it's a 25 metre pool and we use it for swimming lessons, for galas and also for water polo. This is one of the laboratories in our science building known as the Queen's Building. It was opened in our 400th anniversary year in 1957 by Her Majesty the Queen. And we're hoping that one day she might come back, although that's looking increasingly more unlikely. In the laboratories, um, as you can see, they've been refurbished with all the new technology and students enjoy a mixture of both practical and theoretical uh, opportunities to explore the three sciences, biology, chemistry and physics. This is our main school and this houses our English department, geography department and also our theology and philosophy department. We're now in the Hardy Aylers Design yeah. Centre, okay. uh, named after the Queen's Interior. And this houses design technology, food technology, art and computer science. Upstairs in computer science, students learn about website design, coding, hardware and software and cyber technology. Next door, in food and nutrition, students will learn about the art of cooking. They'll learn about the science behind it. All of the materials are provided free of charge for the pupils and they enjoy kitchens with all the latest gadgetry. I'm now here in the corner of the design studio devoted to art. We're lucky to have two large bright and airy art studios and imagination and creativity inspire all sorts of different projects from the students. They can enjoy traditional art mediums such as oil work and acrylics. 
They can enjoy ceramics, graphic design, screen printing, and even more innovative uh, techniques such as photography and filmmaking. This is our 19th century chapel, and it's open throughout the school day for quiet reflection. But we also host a chapel service in here once a fortnight for every year group. Our chaplain is a key part of our pastoral and wellbeing team, and he is really keen to chat with any pupil about their journey of faith. In his chapel services, there are homilies, there are prayers, we also have hymns, and it's an opportunity for the whole community to come together and think about the, the, the quietness in the busy week. This is our memorial hall. It's used for smaller, more intimate productions, uh, dance shows, and also chamber concerts, and we use it during the school day for dance and drama lessons. Around the walls are portraits of former headmasters, including Ian Davies, who was our most recent headmaster, who retired in 2019, right the way round to James Huff, who was the headmaster during the very difficult war years. In this quad behind me, first of all, you'll find the Lawrence Building, which is where our maths department is situated. To my left is the Allison Building, where modern foreign languages are studied. In the first year, students can study French, Spanish, German or Mandarin, and further up the school, at sixth form level, they can also pick up Italian ab initio as part of our International Baccalaureate Diploma Programme, one of three pathways available to sixth form students. The other two are A-levels and BTECs. Also, to my far left is the sixth form centre. It houses our Wessex Auditorium, and it's also where predominantly sixth form subjects are studied, such as psychology, business studies and economics. This is our Wessex Auditorium. It's part of our sixth form centre, but it also hosts a 400 seat auditorium for all of our performing arts shows. We also use it for concerts, assemblies, and as a public exam venue. I'm now in our music studio, and we absolutely adore music at Brentwood. And we have a rich heritage of choirs, orchestras, ensembles, and bands. In recent years, we've also become a Steinway school and we're blessed to have these fantastic practice and performance pianos dotted all over the school site. We enjoy playing music in whatever form it comes, academic music, peripatetic music lessons, and we also enjoy taking our bands and orchestras on tour. In recent years, we've been to Germany, to Italy, and also to Spain. I'm now down at our dining halls, and our lunches are provided by an external caterer, where the children have a wide variety of choice when it comes to meals. There's British fare, traditional meals, international cuisine, jacket potatoes and pasta, and we have four different dining halls where the children can all be well spaced out and socialise, boys and girls, and different year groups all mixing it together. I'm now inside the Huddleston building, right in the heart of the music department. And this is one of our newest spaces. It's a practice studio. And right next door is our brand new recording studio. This space will be excellent for performance practices, particularly when we are rehearsing for our huge musicals that we have once every term. They'll be able to practice in here, listening to the backing tracks, and then go straight into the recording studio to perform live. And this is the recording studio itself. As you can see, we're fully set up with a mixing desk. And then behind me, there is the actual recording space. Fully soundproof, all the instruments in here, all the vocalists. We're really looking forward to using this space a lot as the year goes on. And now in the drama department, we've got three drama studios in the building, and the walls are covered with pictures of all our recent productions. Drama is on the curriculum, and it's also a co-curricular activity. And students really enjoy the opportunity to perform in front of their peers and their parents. Thank you, Miss Craig. And remember, if you would like a tour of our senior school, these are happening every day, Monday to Friday, in term time. Uh, you can book that through our website, or you can contact our very friendly admissions department. I'd now like to pass over to the headmaster of our prep school, Mr. Jason Whiskard, uh, who will introduce himself and say a few words. Over to you, Mr. Whiskard. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A very, very warm welcome to what is our first virtual open morning. We would much rather see you face to face, obviously, but with COVID restrictions and the prep development, that's not possible at the moment. We stand here in our magnificent library in one of the oldest parts of the prep school. The, the library sits in uh, Middleton Hall, which was the original site of the prep school, and this has been the case since 1892. We are very clear that the children get the very best start here at Brentwood, they really do. 
and the facilities we have on offer are second to none. Of course you'll be aware that those facilities are just about to get even better with the development of a brand new uh, teaching facility, a hall space which will allow us to do many great things. And these are the kind of investments that we have primarily for the children ultimately. The offering that they have is very much one that we are proud of. It's a broad curriculum. They have so many opportunities and let's face it, the world is developing all the while and our education and what we offer has to blend and make sure that their children are skilled in all things that you'd expect them to be. But also we like to keep up obviously a traditional touch as well in rooms such as this. The children come to us at 3 plus and then again at 7 plus. We have chance opportunities elsewhere but really they are the main entry points to the school. We've just built a magnificent new nursery facility which I'm sure Mrs Ordas who is the head of early years and key stage one will show you later on. Brilliant facilities, we will have the best outdoor spaces available to the children as well and we really do believe they get the best start in their education so that they have the building blocks to go on to great things. Throughout the school they will be used to specialist facilities, specialist teachers and of course we've got the wonderful resource of our playing fields and things like forest school and orienteering are very much part of what we do. We see it as a resource for the children and they go out there not only for games but other, other aspects of school life as well. In terms of our staffing, we have a fantastically committed staff team here who really, really do focus on the children. That's the centre of what we do. Ratios of pupils to staff are very favourable and it's important to us that the children are known to all of us and that they feel that although we're a big school, the children will feel they're very much known and cared for. That's fundamental to what we do. So back to our nursery facility. Of course we're very proud of it. It's a brand new facility and it is state of the art. The children will go from there right the way through the prep school. And our hope is they go to the senior school. But I'm going to hand you over now to Mrs Ordas, who's going to talk you through in more detail what your children might expect if they come to us at three. So finally from me, of course, as I mentioned, we'd love to see you in person and it's very much our ambition that we will be able to get people into school as soon as we possibly can and it's safe to do so. So much to see here and of course I'm really looking forward to show you around in due course. Thank you. Welcome to Brentwood School. My name is Vanessa Ordas and I am Head of Early Years and Key Stage 1. I'd like to reassure you that when your child joins Brentwood Nursery they join Brentwood School and have an automatic transfer right the way through to the age of 11. We're going to go into the classrooms in just a minute, but before that, let me tell you a little bit about our curriculum. We follow the early years framework, and this involves a lot of adult-led and child-initiated learning through play. So when we go into the classrooms in a minute, you will see teachers doing activities with children and children doing activities on their own. We have three nursery classrooms. Each of those is staffed by a class teacher, a teaching assistant, and a teaching assistant apprentice. These adults are all very experienced in working with young children, and you'll see some super activities when we go into the classrooms. As well as these adults, our children also have specialist teachers in lessons of forest school, music, yoga, and French. You'll see that they have these floor to ceiling next doors, and they will all lead out onto what will be in the most beautiful EYFS play area. It will be landscaped with much equipment for them to play on.
how light, modern and airy all of our classrooms are. The acoustic panelling on the wall helps with the sound. We've got beautiful lights which throw the light up and down. Our teaching halls in every room have a teacher's table, a whiteboard, the interactive whiteboard, as well as a lot of storage. The bathrooms are all self-contained with access to the outdoor area and their own toilets. I hope you enjoyed seeing our amazing new facilities. Thank you for joining us today. I'm sorry you can't be with us in person. I'm going to hand you over now to Mrs Laura Williams, who's in charge of prep admissions, and she's going to talk to you about the process you need to go through if you would like to join us at Brentwood School. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs Aldas. I'm Laura Williams and I'm responsible for admissions to Brentwood Prep School. The first point of entry into the prep school is where the children are three years of age. They then spend a whole academic year in our nursery before moving on together as a cohort into our reception the following year. When children join the nursery, they're effectively allocated a full-time place and we staff the nursery to full capacity from day one. What happens in reality though is that you as a parent have an option of taking a provision that's not full-time immediately. In other words, you can start with a part-time place, which is five mornings a week, nine till 11.30, or a mid-time place, which is three full days, so that's nine to 3.15, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then part-time on Thursday morning and Friday morning. Full-time means your child is in school from nine until 3.15, Monday through to Friday. You have the option also of using our wraparound, which gives you the option of extending the day from 7.30 until 6 p.m. You can choose which provision you take. The only thing is that we ask by the time a child is in Trinity term, which is our summer term, that all the children are here full time. We find this is a much better way to introduce our children to the reception class when it begins the following September. Being in school full time gives them the opportunity to get used to our routines and that gives them a springboard for being in reception. We don't offer first come first served to the prep school and all applications that are in time are considered alongside each other. To be in time for potentially a Nursery 21 place, we'd need a registration by the 1st of December 2020. Offers are made throughout the school, throughout Brentwood, in February. So you would know in February if your child had a place to start with us the following September. If you're ready to make an application, the easiest way to do that is online via the school website. However, if you have any questions, please do get in touch and I or one of the other members of the team will be very happy to help you. Thank you very much for your time today. We look forward to hearing from you.